Did you know that the science of pregnancy is actually classified into three main categories? For our mothers, they could actually look at somebody's face and then tell that the person is pregnant. Well, they are using one particular kind of category. Today, I want to talk to you about the three main categories under which we classify the signs of pregnancy. So if this sounds like something you're interested in, then please grab a seat and join me on today's episode of Midwife's Diary and let's talk about it. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Evelyn, I'm a registered midwife and this is Midwife's Diary. On Midwife's Diary, we talk about everything maternal and newborn care. So if these are the kind of content you're interested in, then please consider subscribing to the channel. So today, I wanted to talk about the three main categories under which we classify the signs of pregnancy. So first of all, we have the possible signs of pregnancy and then secondly, we have the probable signs of pregnancy and then thirdly, we have the positive signs of pregnancy. So what are the possible signs of pregnancy? So the possible signs of pregnancy are the ones that are mothers usually use in diagnosing pregnancy. So they can just look at you like just your physical appearance and then see some changes on your body and then uh, they can put pregnancy on you. This is also known as presumptive signs of pregnancy. So these are the signs that are usually subjective and are perceived by the woman where she feels she's pregnant or something like that. So first of all, the one that you see is um, early breast changes. You see that your breast becomes a bit um, tender and it becomes a bit larger. So usually with this one, you see it within three to four weeks when pregnancy has actually occurred. And then the second one is missing your period. I think this is so, so common. So with this one, four weeks plus after pregnancy has occurred, you will see this as well. And also we have the morning sickness, the nausea, the vomiting, the loss of appetite and all of that. Usually for this, within 4 to 14 weeks plus after pregnancy has occurred, you will see this as well. And we have the bladder irritation. So usually this occurs from 6 to 12 weeks of pregnancy where you'll be using the washroom often you feel this um, um, edge of urinating and then urinating frequently as well. And then lastly, we have something we call the quickening. So usually this is experienced between um, 16 weeks to 20 weeks upwards. It is this sort of flashing movement that is, you feel in your womb that the baby, when the baby is moving and all of that. For all these signs of pregnancy that I talked about, they have other differential diagnoses. And there are other things that could actually cause these signs and symptoms in your body. So let's say something like the frequent urination like this. Maybe a UTI could actually cause this. Let's say something like the breast changes. When you're about to menstruate, you know, let me say when you're ovulating, this can also occur in your body and let's say this quickening where you feel this flashing movement in your womb or let me say in your your abdomen maybe some intestinal movement too could actually make you feel that way as well so what i mean is for these signs they are not definitive signs of pregnancy that as soon as you see these things you know that you are pregnant so for these ones when you see it you need to come to the hospital for us to confirm that it is actually pregnancy. So when you come to the hospital, then we will also do our investigation. So now, then comes to the probable signs of pregnancy. So for the probable signs of pregnancy, the most popular ones are the blood test and then the urine test. So there's this hormone that is usually produced in the body of a woman. That is a human chorionic gonadotropin hormone. So this hormone will be present in your blood and also in your urine. So that is why when you come to the hospital, we will do lab uh, blood investigation in the lab and also we will let you take um, a urine sample. Usually for the urine test, people um, do it in the house before they even come to the hospital. So for this one to be positive in case you are pregnant, it will have to take like two weeks before you see it for the urine test. And then for the blood for the blood test for we to get a positive result in case you are pregnant for us to see the hcg hormone in your blood we would have to take nine to ten days before we can actually find this out so with this one too it has other differential diagnosis like something like the molar pregnancy so because of that though we can say that indeed you are pregnant because of these things we still need to do further investigations so that would take us to the positive signs of pregnancy. 
So the positive signs of pregnancy are the signs that don't have any form of differential diagnosis. So these ones, when we do these investigations and then we find out that, okay, fine, whether it's a physical examination or an ultrasound or something, when we do it and we find the signs that we are looking, the signs of pregnancy that we are looking for, we are sure that you are actually pregnant. So what are some of these signs, positive signs of pregnancy? So the first one is the ultrasound. So for the ultrasound, we have two types. We have the transvaginal ultrasound scan, and then we have the transabdominal ultrasound scan. I think in our setting, the most popular ones are the transabdominal ultrasound scan. So for the ultrasound scan, it will help us to be able to visualize the gestational sac and also be able to know the fetal heart rates and then the fetal heart beats as well. So when we are able to detect that, okay, fine, there's a gestational sac, meaning that, okay, fine, pregnancy has okay, there's a baby coming to form and all of that. And then as the weeks go by as well, we'll be able to see fetal heart beats on the ultrasound scan. Then it means that, okay, fine, for this time around, then we are sure that there's actually pregnancy over there and also in the case where we are not able to say we don't have access to an ultrasound scan we can also do the palpations as well so with the palpation we, you see first of all you can see the fetal movements on the abdomen so if you've been pregnant before or you've been around a pregnancy one before sometimes you like she might probably just feel it sometimes but the other time like you can just see like the baby is just moving on the abdomen and all of that and then there are times that when you touch the abdomen you could actually feel the fetal pass and that is usually from 24 weeks and above thank you so much for watching today's video i hope you enjoyed it please if you have any questions you can leave it in the comment section below please don't forget to like subscribe to the channel and also share this video as well thank you so much for watching until i come your way next time this is midwife's diary and we are walking the talk of motherhood. Bye.